A couple of weeks ago, I addressed a video by Standing for Truth where he was talking about the possibility of inbreeding in evolution. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to take it too well, releasing a two and a half hour response with his friend, Raw Matt. All right, looks like we are live to debunk straw man Dan himself. Guys, thanks so much for your patience today, but I promise you it is going to be worth it. So I thought it'd be quite good. And when I say quite good, I of course mean quite funny that we take a look at another of Standing for Truth videos. This time, one about the age of the earth. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tim Fall Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, if you are a fan of running or exercise, then you'll be delighted to hear that the Run Man Dan channel is back. I will leave a link in the description to that channel. I'm currently training for a 50k, so it might be an interesting watch for some of you. And also, I'd like to say a very, very happy 30th birthday to Maddie. Many happy returns. Right, back to today's video, where Standing for Truth wants to tell us the truth about the age of the Earth. He's talking to a guest that he has called Dr. Lyle. This should be interesting. Away you go. Great answer, Dr. Lyle. Uh, my next question would be, and it's, it's an exciting one, and I believe will lead into some solid follow-up questions and discussions. Uh, what would you say are some of the best lines of evidence against an old universe and for a young one, Dr. Lyle? Now, the age of the Earth is something that, in my eyes, absolutely can't be disputed. If you think that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, then you're in good company with the Friday gang. The best ones, we have the birth certificate of the universe. The Bible is a history book that records when the universe began. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. Uh, human beings are made on the sixth day, and from adding up those genealogies and so-and-so, we get so-and-so. Uh, you find that it's about 4,000 years between Adam and Christ's earthly ministry, which was about 2,000 years ago, so something like 6,000 years. Now, the issue I have here is you don't accept the thousands of scientific papers that have been written on the age of the Earth, with reams of evidence included, yet you are happy that the Bible is an accurate representation of what's happened in the past. That's the best evidence, because it's recorded history. Now, I think there are lines of scientific evidence that confirm that history, that confirm a recent uh, time scale. But that's the best because it's, it's history, right? I mean, really? Lines of scientific evidence that confirm that the Earth is only 6,000 years old? I'd love to see those. Uh, if you want to find out when uh, the last World War happened, you read a history book. You don't do a science experiment and mix chemicals. It might confirm that. But the best way to, to answer a history question is with a history book. But there are people still alive that fought in the Second World War. We have witness accounts. There was nowhere around when the Earth was formed. That being said, I think there are a lot of lines of evidence that confirm that. Uh, lots of stuff in space. That's, of course, my area of expertise. Hang on. You're an expert in space, but you're also a young Earther. That doesn't compute. There are things that can't uh, last billions of years. Comets, for example, they can't last even millions of years, really, because a comet is made up of ice and dirt, and it orbits the sun in an elliptical path. And when it comes close to the sun, that icy material is blasted out into space. That's what forms a comet's tail. Uh, we had a really nice one this last summer, actually. I hope you got to see it. Nice naked eye comet. It was very beautiful. And this is true. Comets do have a relatively short lifespan compared to that of Earth's. Uh, but every time you see a comet, it's getting smaller. It's losing mass. We can calculate the amount of material that's there. We can calculate the rate at which it's being depleted. They can't last millions of years. 100,000 years maximum for a typical comet. But, but this is still more than 6,000 years, isn't it? In fact, in my uh, uh, doctoral research, I used the SOHO spacecraft, and it, it's, it looks right at the sun. And one of the instruments on it blocks the sun and looks at things that get real close to the sun, like comets. And I've seen comets that have gone behind the sun and been totally destroyed uh, in one pass. So they don't last millions of years. And my secular colleagues don't even dispute that. They would say that there must be some kind of source of new comets. They call them Nort cloud. Uh, there's no evidence for that in our solar system in terms of observational evidence. There is what I would say indirect observational evidence for the Oort cloud. We know that these long period comets aren't coming from interstellar space. So lots of things like that. The rate at which magnetic fields decay 
Magnetic fields don't last millions of years. Magnetic fields are caused by electrical current in the core of a planet like the Earth. And that has been decaying. We know, we know Earth's magnetic field has been decaying. We've been able to measure it for the last almost two centuries. It's definitely decaying. It seems to be an exponential decay, which is what we would expect on first principles. Actually, that doesn't necessarily mean that the field is decaying into nothingness. It is more likely that it's getting ready to flip, like it has done many times in history. We have evidence for this. The polarity reversals are recorded in a new rock emerging at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. You can't dispute that. It's not oscillating, not today anyway. It might have during the flood, but uh, the other planets as well. There's evidence that Mercury's magnetic field is decaying. Jupiter has an enormous magnetic field. They don't last millions of years. With Earth's magnetic field, based on the current rate of exponential decay, you run it back 60,000 years ago, it would have been stronger than a neutron star, which is enough to rip the atoms of your body apart. And so uh, it's, it can't be anywhere near that old. It's not even a million years. It can't be anywhere near that old. Again, you can't just wind it back like that because we know that it reversed, getting weaker before it did and stronger again afterwards. We're uh, carbon dating. A lot, of, a lot of times people think carbon dating gives the millions of years. It doesn't. Uh, now, it's, it, all, these, all these dating methods are based on certain assumptions, but the fact is a lot of them give ages, even if you assume secular principles of uniformitarianism and naturalism, a lot of them still give ages much less than the billions of years, including uh, the fact that C14 has been found in things like diamonds that are buried deep down in layers of the earth that are well insulated from cosmic rays. C14 doesn't last even, even a million years. Uh, it, it decays very quickly. And so you, the fact that you find it in fossils and in just about everything that has carbon in it is a strong indication that the earth is not anywhere near billions of years old. Lots of stuff like that. Okay. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,700 years. So the very fact that there is carbon-14 there means that the Earth must be more than 6,000 years old. Wow, that's a great response. A lot of good information there, um, Dr. Lyle. With the, with the comets one, for example, that, that limits the age of the universe, I've seen, as you pointed out, this Oort cloud that's constantly being invoked. But like you said, this Oort cloud is not actually based on real observable em empirical evidence. Is that right, Dr. Lau? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the idea is with an Oort cloud that and it's named after Jan Oort, the guy who came up with the idea. It, the idea is that there's a vast supply of potential comets out beyond the farthest planets, out way beyond Neptune, but we couldn't possibly detect them at the, that distance. There's no way to detect them. Indeed, but there has to be something. Otherwise, there is no other explanation for these long period comets. So it, it's, it really seems to be a rescuing device, a hypothesis that the seculars have invoked to protect their worldview from what appears to be evidence to the contrary. And it, they'll say, what well, you can't disprove an Oort cloud. And that's true, I can't, it's undetectable. Ah, we've got you there. But there's no evidence for it either. They'll say, well, we find evidence of Oort clouds in other solar systems. Not really, we, we do find solar systems that have some kind of debris orbiting them, but we don't know that it's billions or trillions of comet nuclei. And even if you did find an Oort cloud, there's a problem. And how would you how would you make it you, under naturalistic assumptions? The idea is that some of those have been flung out. Maybe Jupiter um, flung some of the original ice in the solar system out to the to the um, ex extremities. But uh, the simulations I've seen of that would get nearly enough of them out there to to make an Oort cloud. So, but what about all the leftover material that wasn't used to create any planets in the original protoplanetary disk which orbited the sun? There would have been plenty of material available there. It's, it's problematic if it's there and it's problematic if it's not there. But since there's no evidence for it, I, I, pr I presume it's not there. <laughs> right, great response. I've even seen a lack of confidence sometimes in the response from the uh, uniformitarians and the evolutionists with the Oort cloud. Um, yeah. So great, uh, great response. So yeah, great response, Dr. Lyle. Well, if that is the best that Standing for Truth can muster, then... I don't know what he's doing. How about this, buddy? You come up with your top three pieces of evidence for a young Earth, and I will debunk all of them. Now, I don't want things disproving an old Earth. I want positive proof for a young Earth. Over to you, buddy. Right, there we go, another Tim Ford Tuesday, all done and dusted. Thank you very much for watching. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, then please do smash the like button and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great week and I'll see you all on Friday for some flat earth catfishing. See you then.